friends. Today I have a bunch of kitchen tasks to get done and so I thought I would take you along with me and show you what I do when I'm doing like a big, it's not really meal prep, it's just like a bunch of, I mean I guess you could call it meal prep, just a bunch of stuff that I do in the kitchen to get ahead for the week ahead. I've got some odds and ends from the garden that I need to process. I have corn that I need to process in the freeze dryer, um, dinner to make tonight, some like breakfast items to make, that sort of thing. So I am just going to take you along with me and it'll be probably all day. Won't spend all day in the kitchen, but we'll probably end it with dinner tonight. So let's get going. The very first thing I'm doing is pulling out this frozen corn so that I can put that in the freeze dryer and then I'm also going to grab my string cheese while I'm down here for the mozzarella sticks that the girls are going to make later. I am happy to report that I have finally mastered sourdough and it's been a really great process because I, a while back I broke down and bought a sourdough starter. My starter, like trying to catch the yeast from the wild, was really the problem. And then I follow Shay Elliott over on Elliott Homestead and she uses a dry sourdough starter method. And I like it so much better. The only thing that you have to do is when you want to make a loaf of bread, you have to remember to start it the night before. So that's what you saw in that bowl was my starter that I fed the night before. And then this is where the step is just like regular bread. So now I am adding the water and the flour and the salt and going to mix it all together. And then we will do the stretching and folding just like regular sourdough bread. Something I really like to have on hand is hard boiled eggs and I really like doing them in my Instapot. It just works out really well for me. They usually peel really well. You'll see a little bit later that these do not peel so well. They must still be really fresh even though they've been in my refrigerator for a couple of weeks. But I do the 5-5-5 method so you just put it on high pressure for 5 minutes and then once it's done, you set the timer for five minutes and just let it um, naturally release. And then after that five minutes is up, you soak it in cold or ice water for five more minutes and then they're all ready to peel. A new place, a new home, for a while, let me feel alive. Nothing to hold me back, take my time, just enjoy the ride. About once a week I will go through my produce drawer and just make sure nothing is going bad. I had some peppers to process from the garden and then also I had some of those little mini colored peppers that we weren't going to get to, they were getting a little soft. 
and so I decided to chop them up and then I like to freeze them and then when I want to make jambalaya or chili or something they're already all nice and chopped and I just have to dump them into whatever I am making. I was in the dark against it all, but made it through the day. Cause I found my way, I found my way. In bad times, I know I'll be okay. Cause I found my way. As you can see, I'm doing the second stretch and fold, and I just do it every uh, 15 minutes. I do that three times, and I'm laughing at my husband because he came out just putting a shirt on. <laughs> Didn't know that he was going to be in the video. But you can see the dough is already changing. It's looking less shaggy, and it's definitely looking stretchier as we develop that gluten. I found my way. I found my way I was in the dark against it all But made it through the day Cause I found my way I found my way In bad times I know I'll be okay Cause I found my way one of these pepper cores it's a very inexpensive tool and I use it a lot actually especially for something that you kind of want to keep whole and I use it on jalapenos especially if I want to do like a jalapeno popper or something and I don't want to cut it in half but also because I do not want to be touching the ribs and the seeds of these jalapenos I learned my lesson one year I was canning jalapenos and I did not wear gloves and my skin and hands burned for like 36 hours. It was awful. So now I touch them as little as possible and wash my hands with soap right afterwards. seem to use an entire bunch of cilantro before it goes bad so what I've started doing is I'll use it fresh and then I didn't get to this one quite as early as I would have liked to I'm kind of picking out some brown and yellow leaves out of there but then I have a dehydrator and I've just been drying it and making it into like dried cilantro and it's surprisingly tasty 
in some like soups and some Asian dishes that I make and so it's worth it to me to put it in the dehydrator and use it for lots of other things later on. final stretch and fold and you can see how much the dough has changed from the very beginning and this really does not take that long it's every 15 minutes and I just set my timer on my watch which is very helpful because it's always with me and then I'm just gonna put it back in my baking dish there and I have a proofing function on my oven so you just want it to be covered you can put plastic wrap in it but I don't find it necessary as long as I have the lid on and then I just put it on the proofing um, function and I put it in my oven for four hours week my mom and dad bought I, I don't remember how many bushels of corn but we all got together and we shucked it all and got it off the cob and then we froze it we started some in the freeze dryer right away and we froze the rest and now it is my job to keep running it through the freeze dryer so this is um, partially thawed out just so that I could break it apart and then I'm just starting a load in the freeze dryer My herbs are getting to be about at the end of their life, but I still have a lot of good basil left and my parsley is about done. But I decided since I had the dehydrator going, I might as well fill it up. And I do really try to do that when I have an appliance going, like the freeze dryer or the dehydrator or my canner. I try to make sure that it's filled so I'm using, you know, it to the best of its ability. I know, I know that we can save it Cause we're like Alpha and Omega Whatever happens doesn't matter I know we can sort it out Alpha and Omega Even if we go a lot of brickers down I know we are Alpha and Omega Whatever happens doesn't matter I know we can sort it out Alpha and Omega Alpha and Omega Like the waves pull you down underwater until we hit the bottom And we do it all again and again and again and again Again and again and again and again We're falling, we're falling down We're fading But I know, I know that we can save it Cause we're like Alpha and Omega Whatever happens doesn't matter right now for whatever reason, those eggs did not peel easily at all, and usually when I use the Instapot, they, they do just fine, so I don't know what happened, but I always keep a list of what I want to get done because otherwise I can't remember it all, so I'm just checking off the list of things that I've gotten done so far. And then, when you have uh, kids that get old enough to be very helpful in the kitchen, it's very nice. So my oldest daughter, Journey, is making no-bake cookies. I don't mind them having no-bakes for breakfast. I feel like they're kind of a breakfast cookie. So she is making those for me, which is really nice to have that kind of help in the kitchen. Cause we're like Alpha and Omega Even if we go all out and break us down You yeah, could work it out Cause we're like Alpha and Omega even if we go out and break 
Something I always try to do is to keep up on the dishes as I go along because it is very discouraging when you're like tired from being in the kitchen all day. You know, if I were to wait until after dinner, I would look at that entire sink full of dishes and be very discouraged. So I always try to just kind of keep up on it and then it doesn't seem like such a daunting task. Next, my um, middle daughter, Jalea, is going to help journey. They're making the mozzarella sticks. So these we make for the air fryer. The kids like them for lunch quite often, but you just dip the string cheese into an egg and then it's just Italian breadcrumbs with some extra seasonings. We skipped the flour step because it didn't seem to help make it stick, but then you just put them in the freezer, let them like flash freeze, and then I will go back tomorrow and add them to a freezer bag and keep them in the freezer. We are dreamers of the sourdough four hours later. I have already started to preheat the oven and now I'm just going to form it into a loaf. I used to do a round loaf. It's just really hard to cut because it gets really wide. So now I've started kind of doing like an oblong loaf and I like that a lot better. It's easier to cut. I also don't bake mine at a super high temperature because we like a softer crust. None of us like that really hard crust. So I think the recipe says 500 and I do, I bake it at 400 and it just makes a softer crust for us. I also need to get an oblong proofing basket because I only have a circle one right now and that will help things out. Just keep on believing We are dreamers of the kitchen today is prepared dinner. This is a new recipe that I tried out and I would say the majority majority of us liked it. It's called creamy Italian spaghetti or something like that. I can't remember but I can link the recipe down below. I would definitely make it again. The concept is very nice being a one pot um, dinner which I really appreciate and so I could change up the flavors some I think and 
kind of cater to those that don't really like the Italian sausage flavor, but overall it was very delicious. this video. I appreciate you guys. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Bye!